This tape is a visual biography of the extraordinary Russian trumpet player, Timothy Dokshitzer. It was originally created by Anatoly Selyanin, a pupil of Dokshitzer, who is now a professor of trumpet at the Conservatory of Music in Saratov, Russia. An autographed photo is first shown with the inscription, as a keepsake to the talented, brilliant trumpet player, my favorite pupil, from Professor Mikhail Tabakov, November 21st, 1950, in Moscow. A second autographed photo is shown with the inscription, to dear Tima, talented singer on the trumpet, lovingly, Gnisia. Actually, this is Elena Gnisia, founder of the Gnisian Institute of Music in Moscow. Now we see a photo of the railway station, Portnovskaya station. Dokshutzer is talking. He's saying, we are now near Moscow, about 60 kilometers, that's 37 miles, from the capital. This is Portnovskaya station, village, where craftsmen, tailors and shoemakers once lived and worked and supplied Moscow with their products. No one lives here anymore. As in any other Russian village, only old women remain here and some people from the city who come here to spend the summer and get a breath of fresh air. Here, near this wooded area, my musical career began. Here is a railway station, Binka. Not far from it, even now, there are army barracks. At that time, there were the 62nd, 63rd, and 64th Cavalry Regiment stationed there. I was accepted into the 62nd Regiment and began my active service as an army bugler. Such a career existed at that time. Radio didn't exist, and all the verbal commands were transmitted by the bugle. The bugler and the cavalry all were required to recognize all the calls. I was 10 years old at the time. I was born in the Ukraine, in the city of Nezhin, a small town famous for its cucumbers. This is the very town where, a hundred years before, Nikolai Vasilievich Gogol went to school. I remember, remember, I remember the Ukrainian fairs at that time. They were real festivals. All the streets were filled with peasants from the nearby villages. They brought everything that we needed in the city, milk, sour cream, firewood, and even livestock. One could even buy a foal. This wonderful time soon came to an end. Disintegration began with collectivization, and within three years, 1932, there was a terrible famine. Before that, I remember the city orchestra in which my father and his three brothers played. They were the core of the orchestra. They often played concerts in the park and also for funerals. It was in 1932 that, thanks to the heroic efforts of my mother, our family moved to Moscow and I found myself in an orchestra. I was the eldest son in the family and played trumpet, so I was accepted both to play and to be schooled by the orchestra organization. Now, 60 years later, here I am again as fate has decreed. My country house, my dacha, is near here at the Bolshoi Theater Co-op, and I vacation here. I was accepted by a school, actually two schools. I was attending a school of general education and also attending a school affiliated with Gnesin Musical College. My first trumpet teacher was a famous trumpet player at the Bolshoi Theater, Ivan Antonovich Vasilevsky. He was not just my teacher, he was my friend. We remained close until the end of his life. We performed together in the Bolshoi Theater. Vasilevsky was an outstanding teacher. He knew how to instill in his, uh, he knew how to instill in his students marvelous performing skills very quickly. His pupils used these skills for the rest of their lives. Vasilevsky used the Arban method meticulously each lesson, giving his pupils millions of drills from the different sections of the book. He had great success. His pupils developed very quickly, and being inspired by their own progress, they strive for even greater achievement. What I received from Vasilevsky remained with me all of my life, and in my own turn, I've tried to pass it on to the new generation of trumpet players. After the army, 
my fate took me to the Central Music School affiliated with the Moscow Conservatory. There was a special class for gifted students. They didn't accept Jews. I was accepted into that group, although I'm Jewish, because of the special request of my second teacher, Mikhail Inokentievich Tabakov. Tabakov's method of teaching differed considerably from, from Vasilevsky's. He didn't concentrate as much on technique, but instead was intensely concerned with expressive playing, especially beauty of tone quality and interpretation. Tabakov himself was a magnificent performer, renowned in all of Russia. He was trumpet soloist at the Bolshoi Theater Orchestra. It was his incomparable playing that inspired Scriabin to compose the riveting trumpet part of Poem of Ecstasy. Although I was studying music at the Central Music School and later at the Gnesin Music College from which I had graduated before the, world, the war, before the war, World War II that is, I was still involved with the army. After my service with the cavalry, I served as civilian trumpet player in the orchestra of the Central House of the Soviet Army. With this orchestra, I toured extensively. Later, in 1941, I was called to the orchestra of Moscow Military District, and all of my subsequent military duty was served there. I was very lucky to serve as a musician in the military, and though I did receive basic combat training, my main army duty was trumpet player. Before the war, in February 1941, I had won a prize in the national competition, and in 1945, my professional level was high enough to pass a competitive examination for the acceptance in the prestigious Bolshoi Theater. I was still a soldier at the time. To be in the Bolshoi Theater Orchestra was my secret dream. I never shared these thoughts with anyone. Though generally I'm not superstitious, I never talk about my plans in advance. So, the dream of my life came true. I was among the finest musicians of the entire country. The Bolshoi Theater Orchestra also supplied musicians to all the other Moscow orchestras. The State Symphony Orchestra was created shortly before the war, and also the Radio Orchestra, conducted by Maestro Gach. The core of these orchestras consisted of the Bolshoi Theater Orchestra members, who, before that, were also core members of the First Symphony Orchestra, without a conductor. This was an interesting and amusing experience the creation of this orchestra. It was a protest against exploitation by the conductor. Of course, it was one of the paradoxes of the time and the idea was soon abandoned. However, in other European cities, Berlin, Paris, and even New York City, this experiment was repeated. The musicians of the Bolshoi Theater Orchestra were the most outstanding performers, and I, as a very young trumpet player among older colleagues, was doubly honored to be there. Now we see the facade of the Bolshoi Theater in Moscow. Dr. Schutzer continues. We are now at the theater square in front of the Bolshoi Theater. It is a noisy, busy center of Moscow. I'm trying to compensate with my voice the sound of the fountain and the noise of the city. I must tell you about this phase of my life. I have spent 38 happy years here performing with the celebrated colleagues. The Bolshoi Theater is the center of Russia musical culture and always has been. It has assembled the most outstanding musicians, singers, dancers, and conductors who represent Soviet art. Even today, only the best performers are chosen to perform here. It is a great honor to perform. Although we were often critical of the productions of the theater, especially when a new opera or ballet was initially staged, everyone felt that every tiny detail contributed to the whole production. It's not always possible to see clearly the work as a whole, and much was bitterly criticized. This is quite understandable, for it shows a strong interest and involvement the artists felt for the theater. But this is all subjective. The Bolshoi is great now and always was great. When I come here now, I hear again from young artists the same comments that were said years ago. At first, I did not play solo parts. The conductor let me mature for several years. One conductor, Fayer, did not let me play in Swan Lake because I had no cornet. Later, a cornet was found. It was a war trophy from Germany, and I was entrusted to perform the solo in Swan Lake. After the first performance, 
Maestro Fair insisted that I alone should play these solos. My heart and soul is still here at the Bolshoi. It was tremendously inspiring to perform here. It was the most important musical school I ever attended, despite my graduating from other schools. I believe the real foundation of one's musical skills occurs while performing within an orchestra. For a long time, I couldn't bear to leave the Bolshoi. First, I began to teach, remaining at the Bolshoi on part-time basis. Then my work hours gradually decreased. I was asked to stay, and that's why I've been here for 38 years, almost all of my artistic life. Because of the way I was treated here and because of the resources of the Bolshoi Theater, I was able to go on tour as a soloist countless times. The Bolshoi Theater has a huge orchestra consisting of three separate groups which can perform at the same time if necessary. And so the Bolshoi Theater will always be my home and for me, the symbol of great art. Before discussing my acquaintance with the composers, let me talk about the history of the trumpet. These valves were invented about 1820. They allow the performer to play a chromatic scale. The modern trumpet with valves greatly influenced virtuoso performing in the literature written especially for the modern trumpet. Professional composers were reluctant to compose for the new instrument. So trumpet performers themselves began composing. They created masterly music showing the amazing things that the trumpet can do. But their compositions lacked depth and profundity of the great masters. Then, almost a hundred years later, when performers no longer were satisfied with their own creations, a new group of Russian composers emerged. It was Alexander Fedyodorovich Gerdeke, concert organist, who wrote the first Russian concerto for trumpet. Then came Vladimir Sholokov. He was a trumpet player himself and followed tradition. He has composed some remarkable pieces written in the style of Alexander Skriabin, whom he re admired. The Soviet composer Vladimir Peshkin, with whom I have collaborated many times, wrote a concerto for the trumpet as his Opus I. This work stunned my professor. He said, if this work had been composed and performed 150 years ago, the performer would have been accused of being Satan, as the astounding violin virtuoso Paganini was in his day. This Peshkin work is really a masterly concerto which makes unheard of technical demands, yet, is clearly yet it clearly expresses the true nature of the trumpet. After Peshkin, many works of this type were written especially for me as I helped in the process of renewing the Soviet trumpet music. As a solo performer, I had a great advantage for many composers were eager to show their creations to, their creations to me. Now, I believe there are approximately 40 or 50 concertos and perhaps another 50 works of smaller form, plus many transcriptions. Examples of the transcriptions include the Johann Sebastian Bach preludes, works of the Romantic period composers, and the transcriptions of Dmitry Shostakovich first piano concerto. I had a very special relationship with Shostakovich and had asked him to compose a trumpet concerto for me. Since he was a very sophisticated and subtle person, I could not impose on him with an insistent request. But each time we met, if the situation permitted, I always reminded him of the subject. He would nod his head and say, oh, yes, yes, I'll definitely write such a piece. His sudden death has removed all hope. I have made transcriptions of his fantastic dances and some other works of his, but I am now occupied with his first piano concerto. Of course, the original has a part for solo trumpet, but when I listen to the whole, I hear it all played on the trumpet.
Time must pass, and then people will become used to this concerto and will accept it. I was concerned about my colleagues who will play this work. It is not just a professional subject, it is also an ethical one. The problem is how to present this music so the original is not distorted. It must be played really well to protect its rights to be performed on the trumpet. I would like my colleagues to remember this before playing this work. Among the composers who have written works especially for me are Weinberg and Tamberg, both having written wonderful concertos. Even Shostakovich called the Weinberg concerto, quote, a small symphony for trumpet, close quote. I should also mention a concerto by Krukov, several works by Peshkin, and the concerto and theme and variations art of Aratunian, a concerto by Gedeke, a concerto by Pakmuktova, and a concerto symphony by Krasotov. We now see Dokschutzer at his dacha. Not everything was written expressly for me, but I still had some influence on many works, such as the Gedeke concerto, the concerto by Vasilevsky, a photo was shown of Vasilevsky, which is now more popular since I revised it. The Pakmuktova concerto also. I persuaded her, Pakmuktova, to change some of the things and created a new edition. There are many composers of smaller works in Soviet trumpet literature, and I include them on my programs along with transcriptions. But I'm very selective in choosing these works. There are about eight works that I choose to play with orchestra accompaniment, the concertos of Aratunian, Gerike, and Vasilenko, plus the classical works of Haydn and Hommel. In the transcription category, there's the George Gershwin Rhapsody in Blue, which I first performed in Dresden with the conductor Kurt Mazur. My tours have taken me to many countries, America more than 10 times, Germany, East Germany about 30 times, Japan, Czechoslovakia, Switzerland, Poland, Bulgaria, Hungary, Finland, and Sweden frequently. <laughs>
今度はあの歌うトランペットを聴いていただきますけど、はい、グノーのセレナードを聴いていただきます。にいらしてくださいませ。まあ改めてあのご紹介いたしましょう。チモフェイドクステルさんでいらっしゃいますけれどもようこそおいでくださいました。まあ本当にあの素晴らしくて音楽のお話ももちろん伺いたいんですけれども、なんかあのドクステルさんは非常に日本の浴衣に興味を持って伺っておりますが、そうだしますか。<笑>何か音楽と縁のない話なんですけれども。Да, я обращу внимание на эту одежду в Японии. Сейчас.
вы на каком инструменте играете? Э, это производство американское. この楽器はアメリカ製のものなんですけど。あの、ソビエトのオーケストラの方は大体どういう楽器が多いんですか。ドライブなアメリカン式、日本式、フランス式みたいな。ああ、まあ、まあ、たくさんのあるように、アメリ
あんな極めつけの、えー、リムスキー・コロサウスの「クマバチ」は飛ぶ短い曲でとても早い、えー、難しい曲でクマンバチの飛行ともいいます<笑>
Concertizing has occupied a large part of my life, of course, but it was not just work. There were stages in my professional growth, phases in the development of trumpet art in general, not just my personal technique and skills. While I was able to observe this growth both in myself and in my colleagues in different countries. I have met the outstanding performers of our time, among them Maurice André of France. He only does concertizing. He's the idol of the French public. Just his appearance on stage puts his audience into rapture. No one in the world can do what he can do on the piccolo trumpet. We had met in Paris about 20 years ago, embraced each other, and had a dialogue between us. He would play, then I would play. Then, I remember, he gave me his pic own piccolo trumpet. I didn't have one at the time. Later, I used it in the Bolshoi Theater. Now, I've given it to my pupil, Parkov, who uses it in his work at the Bolshoi Theater. Once in Paris, Maurice André came to me very upset. He said, they are fools, they don't understand anything. I asked him, in a, through an interpreter, what had happened. He explained that an article in a Paris newspaper stated that Dokschützer had come to study with Maurice André. I had indeed visited his class. I had indeed visited his class to meet and talk with his students. We had talked and, of course, played. Journalists who were present gave their own version of this situation. I told Maurice, ah, don't worry, there's nothing shameful in this. I would be very proud to be your student. I think this is normal. We all learn from each other. There's something unique in each of us. The British composer Timo Timur has written a concerto for me. I played this work in Moscow with a string orchestra in the main concert hall of the Moscow Conservatory with the conductor Tsok. I do not include in my concert programs music which I feel doesn't contain deep emotions. Now I'm teaching a trumpet playing course, and of course I play for my class because without playing, I wouldn't be understood. When I came to Holland to teach the course the first time, this was before my surgery, my heart surgery, the students were stunned and didn't understand my message. Then after surgery, there in Holland, I resumed my playing and could explain my teaching concepts. I allow myself to carry a heavy load of teaching and concertizing because I cannot imagine my life without a trumpet now. Time in which I don't hold this instrument in my hands seems to me to be wasted time. All my thoughts are about music and all of my music is for a trumpet. We are now in Finland and Dalkschützer is performing Paganini and other concert transcriptions.
programmi, capricci, fragmenti.